Hello, people of the internet. Hello. I am American McGee. I'm Martin. Um, and you can actually see Lulu. She's hiding behind this frame. <laughs> She's perfectly... Perfectly symmetrical doggo. Yeah, she is right there. She's looking. She wants to play with the ball. You can see the ball that she's got <laughs> there. Anyway, she wants to play with the ball, but we're not doing that right now. Uh, what we are going to do right now is live stream. What are we going to do today? We're going we're gonna to look at some art. We're going to look at some art. We've got a lot of weird art art today because there's some of, yeah. somewhat of a new project we've been playing around with. You can see it from here. There's some bizarre <laughs> art. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're also going to look at art from Alice Asylum. Not, not much to look at, but we'll get into um, why that is a little bit later in the stream. And we're going to give away prizes. prizes. We're going to ask a question about that, though. We need your advice. That might be the prize. But that's also related to the question we're going to get to later. Uh, but I think... Probably most importantly, at least for our good friend and uh, artist on the Asylum team, Omri, <clears throat> most importantly is we're going to take a look at his HD. Now you say H HD. Oh, I, I hope you brushed your teeth. I did. Like uh, three hours ago. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, uh, that's horrible. Uh, so anyway, we're going to look at the HD version of American McGee's Alice. So this is something that Omri and a team of programmers and artists and designers. <laughs> there was a pretty decent credit list. There was a fair few. So yeah, they did an update to the pack that forms up all of the content in the game. Um, and I know that they updated some of the HUD, like the menu things, <laughs> and they also changed up the textures that you see in game. Uh, so it's supposed to be much more HD-ified. Now, it is. I've seen it. We struggled a bit to get everything up and running. I <laughs> really I, did. <laughs> I actually started on this process yesterday of trying to get the game working, and uh, and then I was called away suddenly to some business outside for like 90% of the day. So then when Martin arrived this morning, we tried to get it fully functional, but I think we've got it mostly there, except... It works, but there's no sound. <laughs> And, and it traps your cursor in the window. You can't get out, no matter what you do, until you actually just quit the game. <laughs> so I searched for this problem online, and I found a bunch of people talking about Truck Simulator, which, by the way, got me really interested in playing Truck Simulator. <laughs> truck Simulator? It looks or like it, fun. Was it like that cluster truck? No, it's like a literal right. trucking, like you drive a semi-truck across the country. And it, right. it's sort of one of those things I've seen... That, you know, that's really popular in Japan is the subway and train simulators. And, like, you're literally sat there just, just watching the scenery yeah, go past. Yeah, for hours and Press hours. button to so, stop. So this is sort of the very American version with Truck Simulator. Anyway, a bunch of people who play Truck Simulator were, were grousing about the fact <laughs> that some update that was done no longer allowed them to tab out of the game. And they were complaining about it for the same reason that I'm complaining about Alice, is that when we're live streaming and once your cursor gets stuck in there, then that's that. You're just stuck in there. So that's where we're at with no yeah. sound and our cursor will become trapped. So that's going to be interesting. Fun. Mm. All right. Who's so, in the chat? Uh, I just saw some chats. Quite interesting. A bunch of people uh, <clears throat> saying that their thingies are arriving. I saw Octo Chicken say that Omega Necklace arrived and Motorcycle Girl's art book arrived. Awesome. Always good to hear when somebody tells us that an item arrived, considering that shipping is still kind of messed up in the world. But it's going a lot faster these it's days. It's going better. Much, much it's faster. not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's much faster. Uh, so, yeah, we, we are in China, as many of you know, and when we ship things to you, um, the majority of them come from either the room behind us here, which we call our studio, or come from a warehouse down south. Um, in either case, the virus situation screwed up global shipping, something awful, and it's just now starting to get back to kind of normal. So most places in the world we can get stuff out to now in like 7, 10, 15 days, but the U.S. is still a cluster F because even though the the products, the packages can go from us through the postal system and arrive in the U.S. in the sort of normal time frames now, once they arrive in the U.S., what happens? They get stuck. <laughs> they get like the stuck. tracking just doesn't update for like a month they plus. They get really, really stuck. Yeah, um, Yeah, but yeah, it's, well. it's getting better. And if it's taking too long, 
contact us. There you go. Don't contact. just post negative reviews online before contacting us. Yeah, but you you really showed all those people. You asked our our insane children to go and don't write. touch that. No. Aren't Unless we you're start... ready. We're ready to play the game. Are you sure? Is this something else we're doing? I don't know. I just want you to be absolutely sure <laughs> that there's no other stuff we need to do first. No, we're gonna all we're gonna right. play the game now. I'm gonna play uh, Omri's game. Remember, there's no sound, so mm. there's no sound in the game. There should be sound on us. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, one of the things that he did um, is that he updated all these backgrounds in the menus here. So that that turned out pretty cool. And she's always been there, kind of following the cursor. But um, this is a higher res version of the backgrounds, and uh, that kind of follows through everywhere that you you play here. He's done an updated res version of this now one of the things that we've been working on um, in the background unrelated to this actually uh, is trying to find and track down the source and um, projects from the first alice game american mcgee's alice and then also the second alice game alice madness returns so that those can be um, handed back <clears throat> over to ea and then EA has recently done a, like a, a reopening up of publishing their games to places like Steam. Um, but there was a problem in that, I, I guess they needed non-DRM versions or something. Anyway, we've been trying to help track down um, and it looks like we've got pretty close to success on that. Um, and it also looks like maybe we could try to, to inspire EA to include this HD HD um, texture pack thing is like a DLC or something alongside the original Alice so that you could get like Alice 2020 HD plus Madness Returns. I mean, obviously it's up to them to figure out how they want to bundle and price all that stuff, but I don't know, it's kind it's, of... It'd be good if that all happened. Yeah, there's, there's, there's... People are requesting all that quite frequently. Well, I get tweeted at and emailed and Facebooked all the time with the question of why aren't the Alice games on Steam now that a bunch of other EA titles are arriving there, but you know, ultimately that type of stuff is up to EA, um, except that in this case, not only is it up to EA to decide whether or not to put that stuff there, but it's also an issue of trying to find the non-DRM versions of these products so that they can be put there. So anyway, um, we are trying to help out with that a bit, um, and we'll see how that goes. So cross your fingers. <clears throat> Maybe what we're looking at here would be on Steam eventually, but you don't have to wait for that because Omri and the group of, of people that he worked with on this, they have uploaded it to some website called like ModDB, is that right? Maybe, sounds about right. Uh, it's, in a, it's in a Patreon post. All of our Patreon posts go public after three days, so if you're not a patron, wait three days. Um, and I think the post is called Wonderland HD, is that right? It's... Come on, Martin, wake up. Yeah. Did you drink co coffee this morning? I did. Okay. Um, so I think it's called Wonderland HD is the name of the post on Patreon. In that post is the link to Omri's stuff. But also you can go and like Omri's on Facebook and Twitter and Grindr and all kinds of platforms where I'm sure he <laughs> posted up links to this. So just go find him um, on those platforms. Or if you're an insane child, go look for <clears throat> the... Wonderland HD post on Patreon. Anyway, the link to all of this is there. Um, it's the link to the mod, which which is something where you have to replace, like, is it the APK file? There's instructions. Delete something, extract something into this folder. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you're looking at the HD version now. Now, can you tell the difference? Mm, looks good. I mean, I can tell the difference. I remember we played this not long ago and I was pretty, I was kind of like on the one hand impressed that certain aspects of the visuals held up as well as they did. Um, but then I was also pretty shocked at how low res everything was. Now he's gone in here with this team and they've high resed everything, which you can see like in the floorboards here, um, just where the camera is really close up on that wood texture. <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> HD right there. It is. You can definitely tell. Now, 
I feel like some of these particles we're seeing are new. Is that just me? Am I, am I on drugs? Let's ask. People probably know this game a lot better than us. Yeah, they, that's Are the sure. particles new? Well, I think those little pink, pink rose petal particles are new. At least they look like <clears> it to me. <throat> right. These guys were always a mystery to me. I, I don't, I mean, they're obviously not really referenced. I don't think they're referenced in the books. They're mention made of gnomes in the in the Wonderland books. Gnomes. Gnomes. Couldn't Not say for sure. sure. Uh, yeah, somebody's mentioned that the Cheshire looks transparent. That's right. He's been made um, transparent in this. I guess that was a. So that's a new art. thing, is it? Yeah. Well, he wasn't transparent in the uh, in the old versions. All right. Now you keep an eye on the chat just to make sure we don't miss the answer to these questions. Well, apparently some of the particles are new. Yeah, I th and that's what I thought. Someone, I forget who, maybe it was Craig Spurlock, told us that the way to fix the sound is in the PDF. But we already did that. We did the thing, and it didn't work, and we didn't have it all morning to try and wangle with it. So. Well, I mean, look, you, you had two of the smartest people in this room working on the planet. On... No, no, in this room, <laughs> Martin. You messed up my joke. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so anyway, you had, you had us in here... Uh, gnawing away at this quite a while before we went live, and we, we couldn't solve it. So yeah, Craig, we know the answers in the PDF, but that didn't solve it for us, so what are you gonna do? Hyperdimension Neptunia fan claims somebody from Hangzhou is calling me. Nope. Um, where was it? The Wonderland books have the Gnome King and Gnomes. There you so, go. There you go. See that that never really stuck in my brain for some reason. Uh, but that would explain why they uh, the rogue team put these guys in here. You think? Is this guy just you think it wasn't just like a happy coincidence? Or no, they actually knew? They, I mean, maybe I even knew back in the day. I don't know. It's it's so long ago. You know. I mean, remember this was uh, 1999. <laughs> it's like a. <laughs> That's that that's was when, so long ago. That's that's when not only was Prince still alive, he was called Prince still. I know <laughs> uh, that's a very long time ago. Uh, so you know, people ask me questions about the development on this. It's funny the way the brain works is that we tend to recall quite easily things which might have been difficult or traumatic or. But when it comes to just sort of normal memories after periods of time like that, they tend to fade quite easily. So uh, my normal memories of things like whether or not, you know, how, how much of a role I played in the story writing for the gnomes, um, I don't recall. They've, they've backtracked. Who's backtracked? Um, guitar Bard and Ostipoof. Backtracked on what? The Gnome King is in Oz. <laughs> yeah, I know there's gnomes in The Wizard of Oz. I just didn't know that there were gnomes in Alice in Wonderland. So that, again, that's why I've always asked the question of where did the gnomes come from? I know there's gnomes in Oz. Actually, we're going to talk about Oz later today. Ooh. We're going to look at some Oz zombie stuff. Wow. This is looking pretty good, I have to say. Uh, it is. I mean, you know, what, what separates this right now from... Oh, man, I'm in some, I'm in some lava. Some green acid. Um, what would separate this from sort of a, a current day sort of indie? I forgot how to climb up the rope. Is it E Q? It's not jump. I know how to. Space. I can swing. Probably jump. No, space is jump. Um, thought maybe it would be right click. No. Ah oh boy. Well, that's it. <laughs> we're we're stuck. <laughs> Well, just try all the keys. <laughs> oh, look, I found it. It's the opposite to that. R? Hey, I'm in the lava. Uh, G? Uh-oh, G seems to be... What the hell? Is that like a god mode? All the cheats are enabled in, in Omri's version of the game. Uh, I don't want to go... Stop that! Stop climbing! What's the maybe opposite the, of maybe F? Maybe the key to climb up has been bound to something else. Well, it's clearly not that. Is it shift? Try enter. Oh, there we go. It's Yay. enter. Man, that's a that's a reach to have As, to get to enter. Askly Pios for the win. That's a that's a real reach. I don't want to have to hit enter all the way on the other side of the keyboard <laughs> to climb up a rope. 
kind of bad design is that? Wouldn't that have been, shouldn't that have been, well, I guess it's not space, because then you've overloaded it with the jump, and that's not great. I suppose. I suppose. Press O or zero to bring up the cheat menu. I don't want the cheat menu. Uh, HUD, cheats, God, no clip, weapons, power up. Who said that? Is that Omri said that? Um, hack this. Where, oh, hack this might be um, uh, one of the guys that worked on the mod. Because that's, that's the, uh, his Twitter handle. All right. Sorry, I'm forgetting your name, Hack This, but I know that you're you're the programmer <laughs> that worked on this with Omri, so he probably saw my tweet where I said we were going to be playing this. So what was your question before we got distracted? What is the difference between this and a modern indie title? Something well, yeah. along those I mean, lines? Once, once you take an old game and you, you update it to new graphics, my, my point in saying this is that there's not a lot, in, in many cases, there's not a lot that separates a 10 or 15 year old game from a modern game other than the density of the graphics on the screen. Well, yeah, I was going to say the geometry is still very simplistic. Yeah, but you have people making modern day games with simplistic geometry. Um, are you saying that you don't buy those wheels only have eight sides to them? <laughs> Come on. Um, but, but that's in the same point I'm making, that, that geometry, geometry is, a, an, is a resolution issue, right? So, uh, okay, well, let me restate it. Um, the largest difference between modern and, you know, 15 year ago, year ago games is the number of polygons or pixels on the screen. Yeah. Fight me. <laughs> I mean, really, what's the, <laughs> what's the difference, you know? Well, this quality of life. Quality of life. You know, just stuff that makes the game flow better. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll accept that, but you still get people making games, modern games now, that are worse in terms of that type of stuff than um, games of e olde ages. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there, there's really good e olde games that stand up on that front. And then again, <clears throat> the only thing that would separate them would be... Uh, you know, the, the graphics density. This person from Hangzhou really wants to talk to me. Well, I don't know who it is. I don't either. No, go away. Um, where was it? Did you buy something Sci on Taobao? Yeah, but then that person shouldn't be contacting me. Should be a Bao Pals person contacting me if there's that's, a problem. That's not true. They, you'll get the shop contacting you as well if uh, they have a question about your order. Mine call me quite often. What did I order? A new mouse. My okay. mouse broke. Right. So they're probably calling you to find out, did you really, did you want it in the pink <laughs> dildo shape or the big black dildo shape mouse? Both. Cyber Demon Dante says animation. Animations have improved these days, I guess. Ah, okay. So I, apparently <laughs> <laughs> my, my point is visual fidelity. But in terms of gameplay mechanics and things like that, all right. Look, there's been a, a million little changes that make things better. It's, it's true. Maybe I'm being pedantic, um, or maybe other people are being pedantic. But my, my point remains that, uh, look, you can make films today, and how are they separated from films of 25 years ago? It's about technique, I guess. But it's not necessarily, I mean, there's still people out there making films with traditional film. Or I should say the transition to digital maybe lets you do more effects, but that the basic premise of game of <clears throat> film and storytelling remains the same. That makes sense? Yes. I don't know. Maybe I don't know people what I'm talking about. People want you about. to turn God mode off. Why? I don't know. Who's it bothering? Everyone. Well, some people said it. I've got overkill enabled, whatever that means. Maybe hack this can tell us what overkill means. Speaking of animation, something I've noticed in recent games, you know, I've played The Last of Us Part 2, and I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima now. The actual animations, and especially the way animations flow between different animations, is just so good in modern AAA games. Mm. I mean, there'll be an animation for, like, pull the gun out, but then there'll be an animation for, like, ducking while pulling the gun out. And there'll be an animation for, like, putting the gun away while rolling. Everything just flows. There's no 
seeing where one animation cycle ends and you go back to your normal pose and then the next one starts. I'm starting to pick up on that a little bit. Um, in like, I've seen like some PlayStation trailers and when they've got like non-flowing animations, it really sticks out. Mm. Like, uh, I forget what it was. It's like a new street football game coming out or something and like, they would like run and run and run and it'd just be like a couple of frames and it'd be stop into like jump, header, land, stop, back into run. And it becomes it very just, noticeable. It just doesn't flow right. as much as AAA games. So yeah, I'm thinking, you know, all this like motion capture and whatnot is really making stuff look ace these well, days. It, it, but your brain also gets spoiled, right? I mean, this is one of the things I, I mentioned, like, when we've gone back and played older games, um, like, I've played Doom, and then you realize that, like, when we were working on Doom, we were playing and building these games, and they were running in 320 by 200, uh, which, when you look at it now, your brain actually struggles to interpret a little bit what's going on on screen, because it's, it's such a, a lack of information uh, that that you know you you just don't make sense of it like but in the day we used to think that it looked quite high res uh, i hate this i remember getting stuck on these i remember before. you getting stuck there the last I, time you I remember, played this i remember we we had to like kind of jump around until we found the right spot that annoying i also saw that omri reacted quite negatively online to someone who mentioned that um, their comment was like thanks but i hate it which by the way when people write comments like that to the work that i've done um, I also tend to react quite negatively, so I agree with you, Omri, that that guy can get bent. Um, but one of the things he was trying to make as a complaint was that somehow the ledge grabbing got messed up um, as a function of the, the increased resolution on the textures. Now, Omri tried to make the case that, hey, we didn't touch anything having to do with um, geometry, so we couldn't have broken that. Um, and to Omri's defense, and maybe to kind of moderate the, the concerns there, the, the clipping um, and the collision detection has always been one of those infamous things about this game. It's been broken. <laughs> it's been permanently it's, broken. Yeah, it's been permanently <laughs> broken. So, I mean, to have the idea that you could kind of tell the difference between the old broken and a kind of a new broken, I don't know. You know maybe it feels more broken now because you can see more clearly that, hey, I ought to be able to reach that that ledge or how to be able to grab that. And in fact, it's just as ungrabbable as it ever was. It's just more obviously so, like, I should be able to grab that. Yep. Yeah. Somebody scroll past now. They said apparently there's a live stream for Unreal's new, like, mocap or motion something or other coming tomorrow. Hmm. Which should be fun. I that enjoyed the, uh, the PlayStation 5 demo of... Uh, Whatever the engine's called, five. Unreal five. Unreal five. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we uh, we got Unreal running on the PC in my office behind us there um, two nights ago because we were looking at the uh, at the work being done on on a an environment in which to put. Our, I feel like I'm about to die. Don't die. I'm gonna put God mode back on. Uh oh. Uh, uh oh, no, no, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna just die. Ah, I, oh, I died. Oh, she dainty, daintily oh, fainted. Daintily fainted out there. Um, where was I? I guess I'm just gonna click load. It should go back to the last thing. Look at that. That's modern. That's advanced. That worked. <laughs> and this where the rage box is? Yeah, see, now I should have gone and grabbed the rage box before I engaged with all those a holes. That would have fixed the whole problem. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so we were putting Unreal. Wow, look at that. That's high res. It's excellent. That looks beautiful. I can tell. And by the way, you can tell that that's Omri's uh, artwork on her face. <laughs> He's got such a style. <laughs> so I, I actually know why Omri did this. It's not to bring joy to other people by increasing the the resolution and quality of the old game. It's so he could he could paint his style all over everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so we got Unreal running on the machine behind us there. In order to look at the, uh, the work being done on an environment in which we're going to put the 3D model that's being built for Asylum. Now, uh, I was hoping we would have something to show off for Asylum, the, the 3D model and the comments and the feedback. Unfortunately, the guy that's working on that, he got busy on some other stuff. 
Um, so he's now going to get back to work on the model this week, and then we should be able to show something the next time we have a live stream. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that Roman, the guy who's building that model, uh, he was actually between jobs, and you know he's not full time on this project with us. We can't really afford to hire him full time because really good 3D modelers are expensive, yo. Imagine. Yeah. So. Uh, so this is kind of like a spare time and weekends thing for him, um, but he is he is putting some work back into it now. And uh, where's my cards? There. Uh, and so we should see some sort of update on that very soon, uh, hopefully during the next live stream. Woo! But the thing I was looking at in the Unreal Engine was the um, the work being done on the environment that she's going to go in. That is the burning house. Um, and I do have pieces of that in the uh, in the art folder for review today. Um, and yeah, anyway, so we had the engine up and running. It was the latest version of Unreal. And I hadn't actually looked at the engine and the editing tools for a while. I like forget to pull a lever or something. I feel like I, I did. Know. Hack this. It says pull the levels. Le levels? Levers in yeah, order 312. Yeah. I forgot to pull the levers down there. Can I just jump down there? I'm going to die, aren't I? Well, uh, order three, mm -hmm. assuming that he counts from left to right, not right to left. Who would, who would do that? The Japanese. They read from the bottom right of a page to the top left. So get bent, you crazy, you racist, Martin. There's people <laughs> who don't do things like you do. You How British, so? you British English colonial evil person. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are people that do things backwards from you, so. Becker's Marie asks, is the wolf artwork behind you available in the store? No. Why don't you, why, let's talk about that, because that's a, that's a conundrum, and we're about to, to do the we're prize time. to reach the conundrum. So let's, let's talk about the conundrum. So this, uh, actually one of my favorite pieces of art ah! from Joey, <laughs> oh. um, was made for Out of the Woods, the Kickstarter we ran. And we've got a few more lying around. Well, there's, to be clear, there's, I think, five of them. Right. Five prints like that. So we thought, give them away, including this, like, wooden hangy thing. It's not just the print hanging up. There is, like, a wooden type frame that is going with it. The conundrum is this. We said that this print was exclusive to a certain tier on that Kickstarter. But that Kickstarter was three years ago now. <laughs> so do people actually care that that is still what we said? Well, uh, I don't know if I would phrase it that way because that's sort of like saying, well, we signed your contract for your, your salary, but it was three <laughs> years ago. So, you know, do you still care that we maintain the, the promise we made about how much we're going to pay you? I mean, that, this is the problem for me is that when you suggest a thing like that, um, it, it should be relatively binding. But my question is not about whether or not we, we still believe that to be sort of the case, it's more of a question of a moral conundrum of, is it the same when we make it a prize and give it away for free? Than selling it. Versus selling it or, or something else, right? So, you know, do we as the creator of the project have the right to give away for free some of these leftover posters, even though on the project itself, it said these were exclusive to that tier? Now. We're asking this to you because maybe we have a broken moral compass. Um, we're, actually, we're actually gonna put it to you as a question as to what the prizes today will be because it could either be these posters or we'll let you, I think we decided on some skull lights that are in the Mysterious Shop. Um, so that is, and it is contest time now. So now that we've done the full setup, uh, by the way, we're not gonna switch away from gameplay during contest time because, <laughs> well, we have to, to, to hit Nightbot. Yeah. It has to be done. Uh, well, anyway, so that's the question for contest time. And the way you answer this is by saying um, either art print, if you agree, we can give this away as a prize, or say skull in the chat if you think that that's evil 
and wrong and we shouldn't give it away as a prize. Um, so we wanna see you decide this um, in the chat. Art print if you think we're okay to give this away and skull if you think we're not okay to give it away. Um, and then we'll, we'll see, we'll tally up. It'll be a kind of non-scientific reading <laughs> of this and I'm, meanwhile I'm gonna try to get my cursor out of this <laughs> this trapped in this hell there's there is a trick to getting the cursor out but it only works on the initial load which is, is that, weird is that what you figured out well you can swap resolutions and the cursor comes out so it's very weird um <laughs> yeah, so this is the problem we've got is that we're stuck in this UI and <laughs> there's the only button that works that's kind of an alt command is alt enter which takes it to full screen which we don't want. No. What's the voting looking like? People seem to be okay with the art prints. Okay, that's given. good. So they also have a broken moral compass. That's glad to know that we're I'm glad to know we're not alone in our uh, immoral rule bending, uh, then that makes me feel less terrible about it. I think that's what that's what bad people throughout history have done. They just look to others around them to determine whether or not their bad behavior is acceptable. <laughs> All yeah. right. Young Machete makes a good point, says probably fine. It's like having a first press still holds value as long as we don't make any more, I guess. Yeah, but my being devil's advocate, my argument would be that um, there was the first press, but there was also something of a statement made about this, this first press being exclusive to that tier. And three years on, we've still got some of these sat on a shelf gathering dust. Uh, so my, my, again, my question was like, well, we're not selling them, but we are just giving them away. By the way, we're only going to give away, what, four of them today? So I don't think it massively yeah. destroys the value of the promise, but... Um, I could imagine, and by the way, we did have some Kickstarter backers who were, shall we say, less than accommodating. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, there were a few angry ones. Uh, Just who, a few, though. You, you, could count, you could count the amount of angry people on one hand. Yeah. It wasn't a lot. Well, Martin, I don't know how to get out of this. Um, and even when we bring up this console... Does does hack this have a have like a console command for ejecting the cursor? Press home, then you can alt tab. Home, what the hell's this, home? Um, this is a tiny keyboard. It's not the full size keyboard where the home key. But I could understand like if you press the Windows key, it should get you out. But we we don't have like a pro. There is a Windows key, but it's not functioning um, like yeah. you would expect. So that's not working. It's a tiny keyboard. <laughs> now, if it was full size, maybe it now, would work. If you do a control alt delete, can you go to task manager and then oh, look at that. I got out. Ha ha! <laughs> control alt delete. <laughs> For the win. Is okay. Win all. Let's go here and then let's go to Nightbot. What does Nightbot say? We escaped. We escaped. <laughs> Cursor prison. Uh okay, ready? One, two, three. It's Cirilla Rose. So congratulations, Cirilla Rose. I believe that the art print team won. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, so congratulations, Cirilla Rose. You have won an art print. And that doesn't look good. It's not good. No. Uh, I'm going to grab a pen while you tell them what to do to claim the art print. <laughs> OK. Just fire us off uh, an email to our support channel support at mysterious.design give us your name your address formatted correctly on separate lines telephone number and just stick what you won in there just to uh, help us out do that within the next 24 hours or you're not getting your stuff you've been told now did you tell them to do it in a format which doesn't anger or offend us I did oh, okay great because that's the worst you know when they when they do it in a really non-functional format okay so we've done a little bit of hd alice and we've given away a prize and we managed to to free the cursor from the game i guess we could go back into the game Ooh, is that right uh oh i've lost there's my cursor uh, that's good to know. Control Alt Delete does the thing. Why didn't we think of that? Don't know. We're, we're not <laughs> the brightest, you know. 
We're not that the brightest. We are the brightest two people in this room. Now, if we do, we include Lulu. That that yeah. <laughs> um, was that piece of art? I think it was there, but it just wasn't in high res like that. It's quite nice that he's up resed the uh, the cool piece of art on the, the mural there on the wall. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this uh, this HD HD uh, you know sort of improvement. Um, looks good, and it it plays all right. And I just got knocked off my pedestal by a boojum. <laughs> Um, it's amazing to think that, you know, 20 years on, this is, um, is still a thing, and you, people are still playing it. I, I feel sad that it wasn't um, something where we, we, we enabled the easy modification of the game. Uh, I, I kind of felt like, you know, once a game's been out 5 years, 10 years, you really ought to open it up um, and kind of open source as much of it as you can, because that would have allowed a bunch of people to do various modifications and improvements to it. Now, of course, one of the reasons why that type of thing doesn't happen is because the publisher behind this game is not well known for being, um, shall we say, very giving when it comes to stuff like that. So it's unfortunate that, um, you know, there probably could have been a much bigger online mod um, community for this. <clears throat> and, and especially because of the engine it was based on, it was actually built on a tool set that was really... Um, quite forward um, in terms of technology for the era, and um, you know, didn't didn't make it. How does this puzzle work exactly? <laughs> oh, no. I don't either. I forget. Uh, nope, that's not it. Ared Nocturne asks, "Is there a donation link?" What does that mean? I'm not sure. I mean, if you want to support the stuff we do, there's always Patreon. And you know, there's mysterious, mysterious store. Just buy a thingy if you want. So, yeah, we don't have just any kind of like a PayPal link or anything. That's to just... not true. There is a PayPal link um, because if you try to download all of the um, Alice Otherland assets, it's like a six or seven gigabyte file, mm. and or seventy. I can't remember. It's, it's it's sizable, and so I ended up putting it up on Mega. Um, right. And then Mega costs money every month. I have to give Mega like, you know, $5 or something. So in the place where you download all of the um, the other lands assets, it actually says something like, hey, it's not free for me to host all this content here for you guys. And so if you're not a other lands backer, um, please consider, you know, this PayPal thing. So it, if you if you're desperate for a PayPal link, um, go over to AmericanMcGee.com and then click on Other Lands, and you'll see there is some sort of... I, I set it up ages ago. I assume it still works. But you can also grab the uh, Other Lands 6 or 7 gigs of art and animation and all kinds of crazy stuff over there if you'd like. There you go. There you go. Proved you wrong, Martin. Proved me What do I know? What do you know? Donation links. Apparently nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. We've got a couple more highlighted posts. They're not super chats. People are spending teeth to highlight their posts. All right. Let's hear them. How about bringing out the cello? I got my violin out. Yeah, I saw your comment early in the stream there. I am so see you next Tuesday, whatever. Um, <laughs> I saw you talking about your violin teacher Ooh, earlier. Picture. Oh, it's Omri's art. Look at that. He snuck his own art into the game. Sneaky. Well, not that sneaky. I mean, it's right there. But... Well, but I told you, this is just, this isn't about Omri bringing pleasure to others. This is about Omri sort of um, tooting his own horn, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Omri. It's okay. You're welcome to smoke your own pipe or toot your own horn or whatever. We don't care. Um, so yeah, see you next Tuesday. I saw your comment about your hot violin teacher. I also had that problem with my cello teacher some years ago. She was pretty cute, um, but she made me angry as a teacher, so I got rid of her. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think I've, I mentioned this before. I haven't been able to practice cello in probably a year now because we got really busy on the whole thing related to, what is it? It's like a kid, I think, when we had a baby. Is that what it was? I think I've seen one around yeah, here. Yeah, I think I've seen there's a child upstairs <laughs> somewhere running around pooping on itself all the time. So anyway, um, the child came into the house, and that it 
It's true. It really limits. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had time to play games or to play cello. Uh, and I mean, I, I get up super early to do work. And the, the, the problem is by the time like 5, 5 p.m. rolls around, uh, I'm exhausted. You know, it's all we can do to like kind of make dinner and go to bed. And <laughs> I don't have the energy left for things like cello or even playing games. So there you go. So sad. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't have kids if you like playing Shut games. Shut up. That's not the lesson. <laughs> it's absolutely not the lesson. Um, these insane children are great. It's great to see them in high res. Now, I remember last time we played through here, they were one of my kind of great disappointments in that they were so low res, it was hard to make out any real detail about them. And right. um, so the, the up resing of them is fantastic to see. It's great. They look great. Yeah, they're having Very a cool. jolly old time as well. Well, they're insane. You can't have anything but a great time when you're insane because you don't know anything, anything different. What somebody, other questions have you got there? Somebody asked about the makeup set that scrolled past now. What's okay. going on with that? Yeah, so that whole process of, of making a makeup set, which my wife is working on, got like many other things, very slowed down by the, the virus situation. Um, so what happens is like we, we're a relatively small project in terms of what these makeup factories normally are doing um, because you know we, this is our first go at it and uh, I just really shit at hitting these guys. Um, so we're a small project and when things are going really well, these big factories can afford to take on small projects and in fact, they want to take on small projects because it allows them to use the unused overflow work from these large teams that they maintain during those periods of time on these smaller projects. Does that make sense? So like a small, a small project among, among a bunch of big projects is a kind of like buffer. Um, and so they, they would like to have our project and work on it. Um, in the in that kind of time when they're otherwise very busy, but when they when they find that they're not very busy like things are these days, smaller projects become an issue uh, because smaller projects obviously don't bring in as, in as much money, and they in general just don't have as much staff on hand these days. So when you go to them and you say, "Hey, here's this little tiny project," they will kind of kind of either reject it or they'll slow down a lot. Um, so. What we found is that the factory we're working with on the on the makeup, like everyone else, has been impacted by the pandemic. Um, that means they've got a lot less work. It means they have a lot less staff on hand, and it means that projects like ours just aren't getting the kind of attention um, that we'd like. But project uh, process process progress is being made, and uh, Yin is trying to get everything done in time for. Uh, Christmas so or so in time so that you could order um, these things for Christmas so all right fingers crossed I, I wish I had like more you know we wish we had more control over this um, it's it's a slow process now with um, with the pandemic it's you know the pandemic has really knocked out a lot of business around the world so we'll yep. see uh... I think Lucky Dragon asked if you noticed that uh, Omri has changed Alice's necklace. Uh, I saw the comment. I hadn't really noticed it because I don't have an easy way to flip the camera around. Can... Oh, I've died. Can we not flip around to her front? Does that not work? Uh, if you know how to do that, go for it. Or maybe someone in the chat will explain how to do that, but I don't know how to do that. I, mm. I've, I don't know. I mean, how much I have to make it clear that... I'm probably the worst person in the world um, for playing these games, right? So I don't know all the little tips and tricks and hints, and so, no, sorry. Oh, well. Maybe we'll see it at some point if you get trapped up against a wall or something funky happens. I mean, you can see here, I'm, you know, I can rotate around, but the camera's pretty solidly fixed behind her, so... Unless mm. somebody in the chat has got a suggestion on... Try and find a mirror. I'm sure there's ray tracing in this version now. Oh, sure. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, you, you just keep an eye on the chat there, and you know maybe somebody will tell you how to, how to do that mm -hmm. thing. Hey? 
I don't know. I'm climbing up a bookshelf, apparently. <laughs> what happened to the guy that opened up the bookshelf previously? Hello? Have I got to go back and replay talking to the guy in the, in the library or something? Maybe. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I haven't even grabbed the dumb uh, croquet mallet yet, so... Oh, well, you did? Go. Did you die after that? I did die. You didn't oh. see that? No. I die all the time. Just, uh... Don't even notice it anymore, it happens so often. Well, that is the main <laughs> point of me playing games, just to die, right? Oh yeah, you gotta go talk to this guy again. <clears throat> is he a gnome? He's a pot smoker. Okay. A pot smoking gnome. Um, do do do, what else we got here? Old tab. Is that free the camera, perhaps? Okay, well let's, let's kill this guy first. Um... As I've said, I'm terrible at this game. I don't need to <laughs> handicap myself any further by holding tab while trying to play. Aha! There we go. All right, there you go. So yes, Omri uh. has changed the necklace. Pretty much, I imagine that when we get to the end of the game, we're going to find Omri's face plastered <laughs> on on the queen at the end of the game. And uh. he's, he's going to say, uh, Wonderland now belongs to Omri, or something like that. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some Omri in here. It wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, Reminds me of that funny story about Doom. Uh-huh. There's that secret room with a highly pixelated face in it. Yeah, it's got John Romero's face in it. But some, some person thought it was him. He sued us. And then sued you for, like, mental distress well, that the, you thought his face was in hell or it, something. It wasn't just some person. It was the parents of the kid who suffered the mental distress. Right. So for those that don't know, there's the scene at the end of Doom. Um, if you no-clip into the wall, then you'll find John Romero's head on a stick. Now remember, this you know this is in 320 by 200, so <laughs> it's, it's maybe the whole head is made up of like 10 pixels. Uh, so it's, it's not the clearest thing in the world and obviously could be open to interpretation, but um, the thing that we were told during the lawsuit was that the kid who was playing the game, and I, I, if I recall correctly, he was medically sort of challenged in some sort of psychological or mental fashion. I'm not, I'm not making fun, I'm just stating facts. That I recall some portion of the explanation behind the lawsuit was that the guy um, suffered from something psychological or mental or whatever and that anyway when he when he no clipped into the wall he thought that this was his own head because somehow he thought it looked exactly like him now you could imagine you know say you're, you're playing through this um what are you playing knights of tsushima or ghost Sam of tsushima Go ghosts of sushi um <laughs> so you're playing through ghosts of sushi and you get to one of these bosses and he you know he does some sort of one of those like dramatic turnaround reveals after like a big evil talk about how he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna take all the sushi um and he turns around and it's your face on the model <clears throat> and he's like get bent governor h um you'd freak <laughs> out right you'd be like Probably. oh man i've been playing this game way too long but i think you know we're in a different age now <sighs> where the clarity of a face texture couldn't be called into question like it could back then. Well, but this is going back to what I was saying before about when games were low res, you had more of an opportunity for interpretation <clears throat> than you do now. So like games before were kind of, imagine they were a sort of Rorschach test. You know, you put a blob of pixels on the screen and you had them play some sort of sound effect and you told the audience that, hey, that's a blaster or hey, that's a pack a demon or whatever <clears throat> and people just kind of went along with it because well that's you know it was very interpretive so mm -hmm. i could imagine how somebody might see pixels on a screen and think like oh no that's my face there you know <laughs> now this is why i mentioned that the guy had some sort of medical condition because maybe he was more sort of prone to that sort of that sort of mistake right right um as a result of his of his issue and what was the result? What happened at the end? Uh, the, the lawyers, the courts, whatever, told them to get bent. Right. Um, they so said that... They didn't get a penny. Yeah, they said you couldn't, um, you know, sort of hold <clears throat> libel uh, a game company for 
you know, this sort of misinterpretation of, uh, you know, pixels on the screen type of thing. Right. But I, I remember that id, the guys at id, did try to reach out to the family and make some sort of concession. Like, they, they did try... I feel like I've forgotten one of these books somewhere. Somebody did... I'm yeah, sure the chat is... this again. Go back and get the book. I don't know if you did that already. Well, obviously, I, I forgot a book <clears> somewhere. <throat> so, there it is. There on the first floor. Forgot the book. Duh. Mm -hmm. That's me and my mental issue. Get good. Yeah, get good. Uh, so yeah, the, the id guys, if I recall, they did try to make some sort of concession to the, to the family to have a phone call with John or to have something to try to calm this guy down. And um, I don't remember the exact outcome, but I, I seem to recall the exact outcome was not that the family won their lawsuit, you know. How frivolous. <laughs> well, you know, it was the, that was the borderlands of digital entertainment law. You know, back in those days, there were a lot of funny things like that that could happen because it was all so unknown. And uh, that sort of thing is what then leads to the end-user license agreements that you see these days that have to cover all these wacky contingencies about not having liability for the... Ah! Another book? That seems like a long jump. Well, it was a deadly jump. <laughs> Very long and deadly jump. Now, this means i got to start this whole thing over. Oh, no. Jeez. Oh, jeez, Rick. There's another quality of life thing you get in games these days. Constant auto-saving, well, pretty is... much, after you do anything. So this is going to be what the... I don't even have to look at the chat right now to know that they're <clears> screaming <throat> at me to save. Like, save, save. They did that earlier. Save. But yeah, apparently there should be four books. Oh, God. No. Who knows? I, you know. All right. I think we're good here. I think I think we've played enough of HD Alice yes, for today. I think we've shown it off. And um, looking excellent. It does look good. So congratulations to Omri and Hack. This is it. Is his name? Mm -hmm. I know there's a Kyle. One of the guys on the team is called Kyle. The other one's Tim. Is that am I saying that I think right? Hack. This is Tim. I think that's right. Um, so yeah, congratulations guys on putting together a beautiful mod. Um, I wish that you'd fix all the bugs and the annoyances <laughs> in the game while you're at it. That would be great. That's next. Textures first, bugs next. Well, I mean, one of the best ways to try to fix all this stuff would actually just be to rebuild the game from scratch in a modern day engine. Uh, it's, it's too much work. You know, you, you wouldn't really be successful going back into an old engine like this and trying to make it better. Um, it, it just, you just should import the whole thing into Unreal and you know, wham bam, make it a new game with all of the things that go along with it running inside of a new game engine. Maybe somebody would try to make it in Dreams. Could be. Uh, Somebody's making the Halo Infinite demo or game in Dreams wow. because it looked terrible on the actual reveal. Right. Uh, it's not quite there yet, but... They're having a good old crack at it. Wow. It's not looking bad already. Huh. Yeah, then it's like, you know, can Microsoft then this, tell Sony, this is... take your faked IP out yes. of your game? Yeah, well, this is a big problem. Uh, and we actually ran into this, and I can't even talk about it because I've been told not... To, I get told not to talk about a lot of things. This is one of the problems with being somebody who's trying to live stream the inside process and conversations that go into game development and into your interactions with the the giants that make game funding and, po and, and publishing possible is that we often get told by these companies that we're dealing with um, to shut up and not not talk about the things that are that are going on behind the scenes and there's often sort of like not so thinly veiled threats that go along with <laughs> these these requests to be quiet requests um, but i'll say that we recently were um, involved in something where one of those requests came down the pipeline and it it was in a very similar sort of situation where a game creation engine was used to create scenes from a game universe that some of you may may know and love um, and the owner of said universe came along and said, hey, no, stop that, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're being so cryptic. Yeah, well, anyway, so then in the in the midst of all that, I got told off. Other people, everybody, everybody got told off. Um, but, you know, it it's interesting because in the telling off was also an admission by uh, one of the parties that, you know, look, these these content creation engines where players can make say they make uh, mario levels or you know ma they make levels from an alice game or something like that they present real issues for everyone involved um the owners of the ip so mm -hmm. you know you own mario but then you've got a bunch of people doing minecraft mods that make mario look like mine or make mario look make minecraft look like mario <laughs> say the words um well, then, you know, who gets in trouble there? Is it the guy who created the content or is it the platform that's allowed the creation and then hosting of the content, right? Yeah. And this problem is, is, you know, the same problem you've got, say, on YouTube with, you know, the, the question of what is fair use of bits of content from music or film um, or doing parody of something or doing a review of something, giving you the right to essentially have you know a bulk of a of a of a thing's content in your in your video or in your analysis um so it's it's complicated and it's i think a real challenge to companies that own ip they own they fund they publish and they control li libraries of ip you know they don't want other people out there making content that makes profit in some fashion um which they don't get to participate in and so it's, yep. a, it's a challenge. It is, but uh, a lot of awesome stuff in Dreams. I don't know if you've seen any videos. Yeah, I have. So uh, and, I and believe there is a Mario as well, even though I haven't seen it. And, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot. I mean, there's a lot of awesome content in general that's being created by users. Uh oh, save, save. F4, quick save. Oh, f F sake. Did it save? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a little icon. Um, so, you know, this is, this is a problem uh, that I, you know, the, the industries are going to have to sort out because users are, <laughs> users are creating a lot of stuff, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're creating <clears throat> game content, but then they're also creating their own version of marketing and advertising for the game content. Or you've got people like me that are trying to show how the sausage gets made inside the factory. And all of this stuff makes the old guard incredibly uncomfortable. Now, I, I obviously think that, you know, the old guard, um, a big publisher who owns, uh, you know, a piece of IP, but then they're not doing much with it. And, a, and the developer who was originally behind it um, comes along and says, hey, I've got a big audience online and I could partially crowdfund this towards getting proper funding from say VCs, but it means we're gonna open up the whole process to the public. These publishers are made really uncomfortable by that, but I'll tell mm -hmm. you something, they're uncomfortable by it today. Five years from now, this is gonna be the way it's all done. Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna be the only way to get people's attention because this is gonna be what is the, the most effective form of marketing is having the entire process of getting a game made open to people who are interested in that in that game now you know some people don't want to get into spoilers and stuff like that so i mean there's there's going to be variations on just how deep you you know certain uh, certain of the audience want to go but like we've seen with patreon you know we have different echelons of involvement and we have people who are supporting us while at the same time saying they don't want to see the spoilers and we have other people who are supporting us who are really involved with the creative process and helping with the story and helping with the art direction. Um, and that, that spectrum, um, I think, is what's going to blossom um, in coming years. And it'll be interesting to see, is it, the, is it the old stodgy publishers who resist that? Do they survive? Or because they resist it, are they the first ones to kind of fall by the wayside? Interesting question. And you think all this is coming in the next five years? Well, look, Amazon is gobbling up all kinds of space, whether it be retail or it's in the online streaming space, which is where we are here on Twitch. Um, and they're, they're getting into games. And, you know, Amazon could just go and buy EA, right? I mean, they, <laughs> they wouldn't have a problem acquiring these companies and their catalogs. 
and then radically turning the whole EA model on its head by saying, look, we own you and your catalog now, and we're a streaming service, and we're a game publisher, and from the top now, we're telling you that game development has to, to hook into our streaming service. So now, Amazon EA, when we develop games, we democratize it, we broadcast it, and we make that a part of the whole process. Yeah. That's where it's going to end up. Because EA doesn't have their own streaming service that people are using. And you have to ask yourself, why did EA recently decide to go and republish all their games on other people's digital platforms? It kind of seems to suggest that their efforts with their own digital platform uh, didn't go so well, right? <laughs> so it just seems to suggest that. Yeah, well, so that kind of means that um, that strategy is finished. And come on, kill him before he kills us. There we go. Um, and then what? It means that the ones, the people who are winning at this kind of stuff, namely Amazon, are going to be the ones that eventually come along and gobble up the ones that didn't do so well at it. Okay. Anyway, that's my rant. It's your rant. That was a pretty serious also, rant. Predicting the future when Amazon buys EA. Just wait. <laughs> and also predicting the future of when game streaming becomes part and parcel of game development. Get into that. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Woo. I managed to escape out of there. It's that magical time. Yeah. Uh, it is that time. So what is uh, the question? I have the question. Ooh. How long do you think it's going to be before live streaming and game development are become a thing where they're linked up. I think we're I think we're early. Yeah. You you see inklings of it now. There's a lot more sort of like development blogs and people posting videos on YouTube, I think. But we're still early. Still early. I <laughs> so you know you see these things uh, I can't remember the last one I saw. It was part of the PS5 reveal. I forget which game it was, but there was like two developers in like a beautiful modern studio sat on like stools next to each other, they had like nice shirts on, like combed hair and shit. And you know, obviously they were reading from a script and it was very polished and professional and they were sort of like, join us as we like go like this journey, is this awesome game, and then the other person would chime in. They just like look at us, <laughs> tell people to like get bent, and right. <laughs> talking about Greg's junk and yeah, like three well. PPO. <laughs> three PPO. <laughs> uh, it's sort of like, so I don't feel bad about it. It's just weird. <laughs> it's true. So Cyrilla Rose brought up uh, Tim, uh, what's his name's double five. Tim Apple. Tim Tim Apple. Sure. Uh, Tim Tim. I can't remember his last name, Sweeney. but anyway, Tim Sweeney. That's, no, that's the epic Tim. Tim, oh. other Double Fine Tim. Anyway, he brought up the fact that Double Fine did, Schaefer. Tim Schaefer. <laughs> he and his team did do a pretty good job of making the game development process open and, and visible and involving their fans. So that's true. Um, that's really good. And uh, <clears throat> they, I think, built some success on that. I hope that they continue doing that. And yeah, so they, they were pretty early into it. I think we've been pretty early into it with the stuff that we're doing. Um, but, you know, that means that what you're seeing is it's those sort of the indie developers like us that are into it first. But I, again, I don't think it's going to be very long before um, the larger developers start to do it, especially because Amazon is going to um, probably push a lot of people in that direction. And I saw somebody mention that, you know, maybe COVID would slow this down. But I, I actually think that what COVID is going to do is it's going to accelerate the move towards virtual and online teams and it'll accelerate the move towards all of the material being in a format that's quite easy for sharing online like you see us do here you know we pull up um what's the platform we use monday and uh you know you can see the stuff that the team is working on in monday and that means that the audience becomes you know that much more aware of, like what the team is working on stuff like that so yeah all right let's ask yeah. see you next tuesday <clears throat> my favorite video game reveal is do you guys not have phones <laughs> Okay. That was pretty great. Nice. <laughs> uh, let's roll it here. Nightbot says, Cyber Ooh. Demon Dante. So, mm. congratulations, Cyber Demon Dante. You have won. I think we, we're going to stick with the art prints, right? I 
think so. So you're gonna get one of these art prints from out of the out of the no woods. Out of the woods, yeah, it was out of the woods. Um, because we've all decided to be in the same uh, leaky moral boat that says that even though that was some sort of exclusive, we can get them away as prizes. You all voted for that, so Martin and I are not complicit in your evil. And you're getting <laughs> prizes um, as bribes. So welcome to the dark side. Uh, I do wonder if I'm going to get any messages about that. <laughs> for sure, but just blame it on them. Because yeah. we, we handed our moral obligations over to the audience. That's and how it works. That's how it works. So <laughs> when the police come and say that wasn't ethical, uh, we'll say that it was the fault of our insane children. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, did you say the thing? No. So you need to send an email. You do the thing. Send an email, support at mysterious.design, name, address, telephone number, all on separate lines, formatted nicely. Tell us what you want. Do it within the next 24 hours. Or we're going <laughs> to... Quite a funny image over there. Uh, oh, yeah, 24 hours. Do it. <laughs> all right. Uh, Cyber Demon Dante says, awesome, thank you. I think Simon, Simon Demon Dante is on board. He, no, he or she uh, knows, Dante is a boy's name, so he knows what to do there. Um, there's actually a person in the world named Dante because of me. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, it's a true story. Uh, our lawyer, uh, they had a child, him and his wife, and they were trying to decide between a normal name and a weird name, and so he emailed me and said, you have a weird name, What's your advice on giving our child a weird name? And I said, go for it. Weird names are great. <laughs> so their, their weird name was uh, Dante. All so right. There you go. <laughs> what's, what's happening here? <laughs> well, this is what happens when you combine <laughs> me and Jen together on a, an idea uh, we are calling... Plushy Dreadfuls. <laughs> is this a pandapede? <laughs> this is a pandapede. <laughs> uh, if you ever saw the human centipede, which, by the way, I don't recommend. I didn't, thank it's, God. It is... Uh, I've been warned not to watch it. I mean, like, I, I can deal with a lot, and I don't mind kind of gore, and, you know, but there's a few things that really freak me out and one of them is needles and needles going through flesh and stuff like that and there's a couple scenes in there where um you know people are literally being sewn together or like they're spoilers they're ripping their <laughs> stitches apart and stuff like that and it's just no right. that's just no yeah it's not for me <laughs> yeah it's not for me either so anyway uh this is a pandapede and this is coming from something that we've started working on that we're calling Plushy Dreadfuls. Now, the idea here is, yeah, somebody, patient underscore three says, that movie was kind of stupid. Yes, it actually was very stupid. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Plushy Dreadfuls, this kind of came out of the fact that we'd been having a lot of success recently with some of the plushies in the Mysterious Shop. And we had a kitten, a Cheshire kitten one, and we had a white rabbit one. And I was really surprised, actually, at just how many people were interested in those things. Yep. Um, and I think that we had a lot of people buying them off of advertising with Google and Facebook where they didn't have any awareness of the connection to Alice. They just liked them because they were cute, weird plushies, right? So, um, so anyway... When I had this break last week, we went to visit Yen's, uh, Yen's hometown. Um, and so I was driving for many hours and I was thinking like, man, we're doing really well with these plush toys, but um, we really ought to kind of expand on that and make something official of them. So uh, I talked to Alex. Alex did up some logos, which you can see on screen here. And we eventually went with the more kind of storytelling logos. Did you see these? Yeah. Yeah. Which ones do you like? You know, because of the, the plushy dreadfuls thing, like uh, kind of a Victorian type uh, name, mm. right back one. Again. I mean, that top one, this, the sort of like the, the printed look to it. I can just imagine it on like a, a torn like poster on the wall or something. Mm. Eh. 
I, you know, it's a, it's difficult for me. So when I, when I talked to Alex about these, I said to him, first off, this looks like something that you'd see on the cover of an album by the insane clown posse, right? It, <laughs> it, it, and I said, you know, to Alex, this is not really my style. This is very much his style. He, he likes doing stuff like it this. Is. Um, but I, I'm old enough to realize that perhaps I should get out of the way sometimes and let the kids have their fun. So I said, look, we'll go with this, even though it doesn't exactly work for me, but we'll go with this in the hopes that whatever is in his eye, in his mind for design resonates with the, the cool kids these days. Um, so it's up on the site with this right now. I'm with you. I, I prefer the more kind of minimal versions here i uh, i really like what he did here with the sort mm. of thread and the needles and but the problem i i have with these is that they don't tell the story very well you really have yeah. to look at this in order to get it i'm kind of curious uh, if we've got any any comments mm -hmm. on these things <clears throat> well crim chris chrism chrism dark will take our entire stock of plushies i All imagine right. That's, that's like a warehouse full of stuff, so you better be careful what you wish for. Flushies are life, as Crimson this Chief says. So will the Cheshire plush come back to the Mysterious soon? Yeah, we're working on something to make that possible, so we'll announce some news on that soon. But yeah, for right now, the Cheshire kitten is not in the shop. And the uh, rabbit is. The rabbit is, and it's under the plushy Dreadful brand. So if you're interested <laughs> in a plush rabbit, um, you're going to grab one, and it's a plushy dreadful rabbit now. Uh, so, what are plushy dreadfuls? Well, dreadful plushies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really do laugh when I think about what happens when the factory that we work with sees these <laughs> things. Um, some are more sort of tame than others. This one's obviously a bit messed up. Uh, <laughs> only if you assume that they are sewn together, and I mean, we would try to make them look really messily sewn together it's great though it's a panda peed it is it's uh, pretty good i like this one a lot actually of all the designs this now is in sort of my top three <laughs> um this this guy is also pretty high on the list i like this uh now it's hard for me to know is this a wolf that's still alive that has a pig on the inside or is this a pig wearing a wolf <laughs> Now, Yin had an idea, which was that the, the mouth of the, and the, the top of the, the wolf's head can flip back like a hat, right. which means that it's, it's actually a pig wearing a wolf. That's how I see it, yeah. even when it's not flipped back as a hat. So, yeah, so that's what's going to get done on this one. She's going to instruct the factory on this one to render the plush on the inside as, as a pig, and then make it so that the pig, you know, the top of its head is complete, and then that the wolf um, kind of top of his head can peel back to reveal the pig underneath, and so it's like the pig is wearing a wolf concept, or yeah. co con, uh, wolf costume. Yep, I like that. Uh, patient322 asks a morbid question. Uh-huh. If during Asylum production, an insane child tragically passed away, and when Asylum is released, there are mysterious unknown character in Wonderland that no one on the production team programmed to bear a strong resemblance to the insane child who died, what would you think? It, like, it just appeared in the game and nobody put it there? But how would we know it looked like an insane child? Because we don't know what you look like. Yeah, that's the problem. We wouldn't know <laughs> that that thing looked like you unless you um, died and at the same time someone sent us a picture of you and then that would be really weird. So mm. um, if your question is more like, if you kill yourself, will we put you in the game? The answer is no, <laughs> for sure not. No. I want to be very clear. If anyone dies or meets their end, however, uh, during this time, you will not be in the game. Very much <laughs> not in the game. Uh, we don't want to glorify self-harm or things like that, so no. Um, anyway, my reaction, if you're just asking me from sort of like a horror movie perspective, let's imagine this was just a fictional scenario. Um, that would be freaky, obviously. That would be quite weird. We'd be bothered. But I would assume... Because I'm, I'm, I tend to have a very rational, scientific mind. I would assume that there was a human actor behind all that. Yeah, right? you wouldn't think it was magic. No. 
you'd think that someone had done something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I'm very anti-magic, anti-voodoo type of stuff. I mean, we, we do a lot of voodoo silliness in the art and um you know I, I wrap alchemy and all these kinds of things and we talk you know, in, into the projects and we talk about tarot cards but i'm not a believer in any of that stuff um you know i, I just find it interesting how people in general we we clearly have a part of our brain that's linked up to the belief in the supernatural <clears throat> or into a magical sky beastie you know god type of thing is that the you know, same person yes. calling you just answer it. I don't want to. I want to know who it is. No. I sometimes think about stuff like this weirdly. I don't know why. I try and imagine like how ye oldy people would react if you could so somehow go back in time and show them modern stuff. And you know, there's that saying about, you know, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yes. I don't think that's true anymore. I mean, maybe it was true hundreds of years ago. But can you imagine seeing anything that you just could not explain? Somebody could just show you a thing and you would say, oh my god, this can only be magic. You mean as a modern person right as now? As you now. Oh, uh, you know... I think we've gone past I think, that. I think we've programmed ourselves to, <laughs> to understand that there's a thing called technology, but I think that the quote had more to do with <clears throat> sufficiently advanced technology <clears throat> is is a kind of magic right i mean it's I, a kind of magic there you go. that's a good song <laughs> uh let's get back to pigs and wolves so i saw someone in the chat said oh my god what am i looking at um <laughs> now this is a wolf that is still alive but the pig is trying to get out um <laughs> that's the story here <laughs> um so I like both of these. I think they're both great. Um, now, this is a pig in a dead wolf. I think we need to cross out his eyes to make it clear that this one's dead. Probably. And then this one is a angry wolf with a pig trying to get out of well, him. Somebody says he's more smug. Aster Zero. Why is the wolf so smug? Maybe because he's <laughs> got... Lots of little baby wolves in his stomach who are slowly eating the pig, and so the pig will never escape. Uh, or maybe he knows that the pig is already half digested, so the pig, yeah. the pig cannot escape. Um, but yeah, I think um, that's, that's a good one. Now, somebody <laughs> says, uh, wouldn't it be better if the pig was a sheep instead? Yeah, it could be, but remember, the story we were riffing off of here is the story of the three little pigs. And I think we got back onto that topic because I put that Three Little Pigs picture into the Mysterious Shop. Mm -hmm. That might have been what it was. I, I recently was looking through a bunch of Out of the Woods art, and um, I thought it would be fun to put this in the shop as a, you know, it's called a triptych when you yeah. have three photos together. Because anyway, there's a straw pig and a wood pig who's getting torn to bits by the wolf and then there's brick pig who's like nope that's a smug looking pig. that's a smug looking pig right there he's like nope not today wolf um anyway so we were on this topic and that was why we did the pig and the wolf stuff because it's a reference to three little pigs so. yeah uh now this what we were thinking was i don't know how many of you are fans of or aware of the brand well i'm sure lots of people are aware of it now there's a brand called paul frank yeah. and paul frank is quite famous for these wallets made out of these relatively simple shapes now funny story i don't know if i've told this before but um i actually bought a wallet from paul frank directly out of a mm. cardboard box in san francisco on hate street um he used to go up and down the hate ashbury area with a box full of hand sewn wallets and this was obviously before he'd become a brand um so the shops were buying their wallets from him directly and he was hand sewing them himself and sometimes you'd catch him out on the street walking up and down um selling these to the shops the place where i bought mine was called villain's vault on um, mm. hate street i used to love that shop and um anyway so i i interacted with the paul frank guy on a number of occasions and bought his wallets from him directly um, and I was a fan of these. I always thought these designs were really cool. Um, so when we started working on these 
designs, it kind of took my brain back to like, oh, you know, it'd be really cool if we simplified down the artwork <laughs> for these pig and wolf things, and then maybe put these on t-shirts or put these on wallets and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that's something else that Jennifer's working on. And this was meant to be a bag in which one of these toys would be <laughs> shipped. Um, this is actually meant to be a punching bag and it's a punching bag that belongs to this guy. <laughs> the bare-fisted bear. This is bare-fisted bear. Now, this was version one of bare-fisted bear. Uh, Jennifer had sent it and suggested that it looked like his stuffing was coming out. And then I thought, like, no, that's not good. Wait a second. Okay, we gotta, I'm going to have to skip through a bunch of this stuff. Um, that's not good because I want him <laughs> <laughs> I, I want him to have a bear as a fist. So then he becomes bare-fisted bear. <laughs> and then I think Omri suggested doing him up in sort of the Doom, um, the Doom <laughs> pose, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, the idea behind Bare Fisted Bear is that he would he would ship in that punching bag that that looks like it's made from the carcasses of all the other animals <laughs> that he's punched to death. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's Bare Fisted Bear. Uh, it looks like Pedo Bear. It does kind of look like, but every everything not, looks like not enough pedo, to worry us. <laughs> everything looks like pedo bear. If you've seen pedo bear, um, and there's a bunch. By the way, I mean we see these in China here. There's a there's a bunch of designs that are done, um, that are these kind of simplistic. Maybe they're coming from Japan or Korea or from China, of um, of just sort of cute bear designs. And the problem is anything that's got you know, round eyes and a bear head can basically <laughs> look like pedo bear, right? I guess. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I don't think this this exactly looks like pedo bear. I mean, look, pedo bear's sort of snout looks like a, a sort of smushed ball sack, and our our bear's snout is distinctly oval, kind of round. It's and, different enough. I mean, look, we've got he's got like a Terminator eye, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure. Pedo Bear is not ripped like that. I mean, he, this guy is ripped. Swole. There's one reason why I wanted him to be ripped was because people were constantly commenting on the fact that the, the White Rabbit plush, he looks like he's ripped. And people loved that. It was really funny. Like, there was a whole <laughs> community of people that were commenting on Instagram and Facebook that I don't think were fans of Alice. They don't not aware of Alice. But they are fans of like pumping iron you know <laughs> so when they saw a little plush toy with abs they just, they were sort of buying it like crazy even though it's just stitching not abs exactly um so i don't know i don't think that bare-fisted bear looks a lot like pedo bear and i'd like to think that bare-fisted bear would would punch out pedo bear i'd, I'd <laughs> hope so so um yeah all right what else have we got what else have we got? Have you got any comments on Bare Fisted Bear or um, on Bare Fisted Bear got them abs? Um, yeah, no, so this no was Brachances, a... no resemblance. So this was Bare Fisted Bear turned into the artwork, which you might see like on a t shirt or rendered in leather on a wallet. Yeah. Um, so I think the idea here is to have the plush, a shirt, and a wallet or a bag or something like that that goes along with them. Yeah. Um, I see a highlighted see comment there for Tuesday. some reason you're not reading. I was, I was waiting for you to stop talking. Do you, you stop go talking. to the gym stop, or stop work it. out stop at talking. home? Stop talking. What's your workout like? <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Do you go to the gym or work out at home? Oh, I go swimming. Um, there is a hotel a few meters away from our house where they've got a very nice swimming pool and <clears throat> that's a very cheap uh, family membership and so we all go there yin goes there for yoga and i go there for swimming and then we do some kind of other workout at home sometimes so this is uh banana bear <laughs> banana bear well this went through a bunch of different revisions and <laughs> I, I started, have you ever heard the joke about the pigeons who get the, the wish to be humans for a day? No. All right, so like there's a, there's a forest goddess or something, and there's these pigeons in the forest, and I'm not, not pigeons, there's, um, there's statues in the forest. 
Did I say that completely wrong? So the statues. Did you say pigeons. Get... Oh no no no. Okay, sorry. I got it all messed up. So there's statues in the forest, and the the, some, the statue god comes along and says, "I'll grant you, um, you know, being human for a day." And so the statues um, run off into the forest, and then they come back, and the the god, the like the fairy or the goddess or whatever is like, "You're you're back early. You still have four more hours in the day." And so the one statue turns to the other and says. Oh, great. All right. This time I'll hold the pigeons down and you shit on their heads. <laughs> so I was thinking, like, if you were bananas and then you got a wish, uh, maybe you'd want to take over monkeys. Like, you'd want to mess monkeys up, you know? Maybe. Um, so that was where this concept sort of started to evolve into was um, if you were bananas, you'd want to peel monkeys. Right. Right. Uh, so that's why this monkey is peeled, and then underneath he's he's turning into bananas. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, now she's done a couple of variations on that um, that were pretty cute. That had bananas coming out the ears um, and things like that. I'm doing a terrible job of of moderating my image content here. I think I've missed the um, the picture. I didn't upload it. Anyway, there's a, there's a pretty good variation on this monkey that was basically uh, the just bananas coming out everywhere. It started off with banana out the chest, and then it went to peeling the monkey um, to end up like that. And then, but I think she started doing these accessories. Under accessories, she did a couple of these things. There we go. So that that was the <laughs> final evolution of it was. Um, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, but done with bananas. And All in one. All in one. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so that's that's what we're doing in general for this concept of of the of the plushies. Um, is just making a line. Um, there'll be monkeys and bears and dogs and you know variations on all these types of things. Um, the dog plush that she did, I had. The idea with her that instead of your dogs got worms, it's that your worms have dog. <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically a bunch of worms who've taken up residence in a dog. I don't it's know. It's kind of sinister. It is very sinister. I don't know if parasite like, stuff is kind of freaky for me. I agree, <laughs> and I don't know if people want to buy crap like this, but I figure <laughs> I figure we just kind of mess around and we see we we see what sticks. Um, so yeah, that's. That's where we're at on the uh, the <laughs> plushies. Uh, all right, I think it's time. We've only got a couple minutes here. It's pretty close. Let's let's just go through the last of these, um, and then once this is done, we're gonna go into the latest updates on Alice Asylum. Uh, let's see, is there anything else to show off? We did have um, there was a rabbit plush that got done in this collection. I think that's in the art folder. Where is it? Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, but I'm like I'm curious cat. to know what the cat you know, yeah, the cat got that is. tentacle butt cat. <laughs> I think Scruffy it's, bumps. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's it's just more of the same of like your cat doesn't have worms your cat is worms you know something <laughs> like that. Um, but I I am curious to know and that's what our our contest time question is going to be. Um, you know you you've seen a bunch of these now. Maybe tell us in the comments, you know, which is your favorite? Um, you know, are you interested in stuff like this? Or are we sort of, you know, tentacling up the wrong tree? Um, you know, I don't know. So just fill up the comments with your thoughts. What's your favorite? And, uh, you know, which, which one do you want? If, what if kind you... of animal slash object combination would you make a plush out of? Now, now you're confusing the question. <laughs> I want to know which ones of the ones we've shown they really like, and uh, or you know, just maybe there's going to be people who just say I don't like this concept at all, get bent. Well, let's so, have a look. Let's see what they say. A truth decay says not my stick. Mm. There you go. Uh, since you're not going to read the Ascipios comments, Asclepios definitely loves them. Scruffy bumps. I love him. Says Askly. <laughs> Pops, I love scruffy bumps. Um, Death in Vegas, Rabbit. Good, good group. Went, I saw Death in Vegas at a festival once. I like the pig in wolf's clothing, <clears throat> says Lucky Dragon. Uh, rabbit the, and the banana monkey. 
for a sight dog. Veteran of War Rabbit is not doing it for me. Huh. Mm. I wouldn't have thought that that was Veteran of War. Is that what it says somewhere? It's never what we said. We, we've we always just assumed that these were sort of more like the kid in Toy Story, Sid, who has the collection of kind of broken and stuck together mm -hmm. toys. I always imagined these were more in the vein of you know, toys you would have found in his collection or would have um, sort of escaped from his room, um, things like that. Cat without tentacles. Asteria visual. Likes the cat without the tentacles. All right. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it bye does bye. look pretty cool. There's just a shadowy black object. Maybe the tentacles is a step too far. Who knows? <laughs> I think the back of the box on these <laughs> things is always going to say uh, this This is meant to be a step too far. Because that, <laughs> that thing is pretty... Ugh. I wouldn't want this as a cat. I don't know. <laughs> I, anyway, I mean, one of the things I wrote as a funny tagline was... These toys are meant to make your friends say, ooh, what's wrong with your toy? They are plushy dreadfuls. They are yep. dreadful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, right, well, let's go ahead and... Roll it. Roll it. Three, two, one. Truth Decay. Ooh. It's not his shtick, but he won anyway. <laughs> Congra congratulations, Truth Decay. For sure you know the drill. Um, you have won one of these here, illicit pirate posters that we're technically not supposed to give away so congratulations on your <clears throat> moral slide towards being a bad person and uh you know how to do the thing right to support at mysterious dot design send along your name and your address and your phone number and do all that within 24 hours and in a format that does not cause anger or resentment or other things by myself or martin yeah uh martin do you want to talk about freaky fandoms go on then Freaky Fandoms, our biggest sponsor and longest sponsor. Deborah and Andrew have a podcast where they talk about uh, pop culture, movies, video games, books, and the like. Um, the latest one, as you can see on the screen, they're talking about Nightbreed. You haven't seen, you I said. Have not. I've, I've seen a lot of Clive Barker stuff. I've read all of his books. I've, I've met and worked with Clive Barker. I've been to his house, houses in Los Angeles. Uh, but I've never seen Nightbreed. So I've done a lot of Clive Barker <laughs> things, but I've never seen Nightbreed. I saw it once many, many moons ago. But I should probably see it again, because it was kind of, kind of funky, I seem to remember. Hmm. But yes, they are talking about Nightbreed in this particular podcast. So uh, where are they? SoundCloud? Everywhere. Uh, where are they Instagram, not? YouTube, Twitch, Twitch. Twitter. There, you can find freaky fandoms everywhere. Yes. Go over, give I mean, them a listen, give them some love. They're even in the, like, they've got their advertising in the, in the banners here. It's, it's all over right. the place. Where right I, there. Where would I post? Is it there? It's in that And banner. if you're watching this on YouTube, you can scroll down into the description of this video and you will find links to their stuff. Why is that? Because they're our biggest and longest running sponsors. So if you go and you support them, that's also supporting us and it's supporting them and everybody's happy. It's supportception. It is. Yay. Alrighty. So yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, now let's get into a couple of other things. Uh, we're, we're getting towards the end of today's stream. I wanted to, to just mention really quickly, uh, there was, there's not a lot of stuff to look at on Alice Asylum this week. That is partly because there's been people on vacation, myself included. Um, one of the people on vacation was Dario. He is in Italy and uh, these days, did you do this or it was is this a thing in in the uk or is it just the rest of europe where like the whole month of august is a vacation i don't remember that ever being an england thing hmm well it yeah. is a thing um and it is a thing with the a lot of the people that we're also dealing with on the business development side of alice asylum that uh we had process going along going along going along and then suddenly we get an email that says don't expect any communication or progress for the next month because everybody's effing off on vacation. So um, that has slowed us down on the business development side of things, but it also kind of slowed us down on the art side of things. And the art side of things was also slowed down by the fact that last week I was on vacation and then Alex Crowley has been on a kind of vacation because he's moving house. Um, mm. So really most of the work, as you saw, that got done last week was done by Jennifer um, and she did a tremendous amount of work on the plushy dreadful thing 
Um, so when we when we switch gears to look at Alice Asylum stuff, <laughs> I think we we didn't stop and look at this. <laughs> Why is that Triclops? I don't. I mean, it's three. It's three blind mice, and he's been stuck uh, together where it's one mouse, three heads. So he's a Triclops. It's probably licensing issues because I think Triclops was a bad guy in He Man. I see. Well, <laughs> I mean, one of the things when you when you do a name like that, um, if it doesn't clearly intersect with the He Man version of Triclops, <laughs> then they don't have a claim. So right. you know, I. Anyway, um, but there was work being done by Joey uh, this last week. She was continuing her efforts on this. She calls this image Small House. Okay. So, yeah. And now if you were following along on Patreon or maybe if you even saw our last stream, was this on the last stream? Yeah, it was. Yeah, we, we talked about it a little. And, and we collected a bunch of comments and I showed how I thought that the image should be sort of tilted. Now, she's mess this up I mean, the whole tilt thing is weird everything's it's wonky up. i mean the blood is going down the walls in a normal fashion but then the lampshade is off to the side so it's it's a I guess... wonky but anyway it's lovely <laughs> yeah. uh, it's meant to be wonky and she sent along with it a kind of uh sorry i'm just doing a terrible job of curating images here is it going to be like it's not here. Oh, it's not even here. Great. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, if you go over to Patreon, um, you'll see that she did a key um, that sort of explains all the different elements that are going on in the image. Um, so the image itself is at the, obviously at the top here. And then she did this image, which breaks down a bunch of the hidden elements in the scene. And so... Um, she's showing how, you know, there's these tentacles in the images here. There's a bunch of tentacles hidden around. There's, obviously, there's real tentacles poking through the ceilings. Um, but she did hide a bunch of stuff in the picture itself. And I think this turned out just fantastic. Really lovely. It is good. Um, was it somebody asked, small house or big Alice? Well, that is the question when you're in Wonderland. <laughs> what, which way is up? You know, what's, what's small, what's big? It's all relative. Um, but yeah, this piece of art got done. Now, if you want to see the, oops, if you want to see the sort of key to this and some of the notes that, that Joey wrote, you could head over. Um, that is in the post I mentioned previously that's called Wonderland HD. And that post also has the links to moddb.com, which is where Omri's HD update of AMA can be found. And uh, I think you also mentioned something about this month's art print, but that was in the post afterwards. Yes. That's the print that's going to go out for people for this month. Yes, it is July's print. That's a nice print. For the people who are charged in August. What's that one called? How Fine You Look When Dressed in Rage. Oh. It's got a long name, this one. That's beautiful. It's really good. I like to see... The spider legs, as opposed to tentacles, just kind of like mix things up a little bit. There's some tentacles in there as well, but I like the sort of insect leg bits. Yeah, and it's like what's like one day left to change your tier if you want this. Well, so that's cool. Beautiful. It is. It's a good one. All right. Anyway, back to this. Um, that was the piece of art that Joey turned in and uh, did her revisions on. Now, some of the other stuff that got done on Alice Asylum, Omri is working on the area that is inside the chess the chess kingdom um and this is kind of all contained inside of asylum under the umbrella of depression and so um this was some of the work that he's been doing on that i think this was actually older an older piece of art but i neglected to include it in any of the recent updates but um this will be an area that alice explores in the chess realm and as we've mentioned previously the chess realm is divided between the black and white pieces um, as per usual but it also has chaos integrated into the scene so we've said that in other places in wonderland chaos is sort of creeping and overtaking but the chess realm have figured out how to integrate chaos and live um, a happy coexistence with it so when alice gets there that's going to be kind of a major part of the story is hey the queen of hearts who is the queen of the cards um, she's very anti-chaos and she's doing everything she can to fight against it to maintain order and then the chess pieces have figured out how to integrate chaos peacefully into their lives right 
and that is indicated here by these little fungusy growing tendrils and tentacles and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Um, I see somebody, Lucky Dragon says, it should be red and white pieces. Yeah, we're talking about that. We're talking about how um, the red and white and the black, like, how are we going to work all this kind of stuff into the story? Mm -hmm. um, I'm still working on that with Alex, so we are doing some story stuff in the background while Omri is doing art stuff in the background. So there's there's going to be an update before too long on things related to story in that realm. Um, and that'll give you, Lucky Dragon, and all of our other insane children a chance to chime in on and talk about <clears throat> the, the content of that and how the narrative works around that. There you go. Now, I did mention earlier in the stream that uh, work on the 3D model is proceeding, but Roman, our 3D modeler, um, it's not his full-time gig, so he had slowed down on this a bit. Um, but we should see an update to this model. And again, that those updates based on your feedback, on the feedback we've gathered <laughs> online, um, we should be seeing an update to this in the next week, I think. Right. And hopefully the update will come with... Oh, I know why, I know why these images aren't displaying. Because I copied those in there after you... Ah. After you clicked on the image in there. That's that's why I'm missing a bunch of art like this. Okay, that's interesting. Um, damn you, Martin. <clears throat> okay, so this is what I wanted to show. Um, this was a piece of art that I think Omri did that's <clears throat> meant to be kind of an example of Alice's house, the one that burns down. Um, so this is what's been given to Tao. That's the environmental artist who's working inside of Unreal to use as a background, a model for the scene where we're going to put the ash dress young Alice with fire burning up in the scene and her hair flying around. Yeah. Um, and I've seen some of that stuff in Engine, the, the kind of early bits of that. We don't have anything we're ready to show, but I've seen some of it and it's looking really cool. So um, that's getting done. Uh, this is a screenshot from the guy who's in possession of Alice Madness Returns source code. Um, so like I said, we are working to try to get this back from him so that we can then pass it to EA so that it can then maybe get republished in various places. But yeah, he sent along these screenshots just as a proof of life. That like, <laughs> hey, I've got this, you know. Be holding up today's newspaper. Something like that. <laughs> um, so what else have we got in this folder? Now that I've, I've refreshed the folder, there might be a few more bits and pieces in here that were not in the other. Ah, right. So she's, this is the key. So she's written that there's 12 tentacles, six blue butterflies, one blossoming rose, smiling with sharp teeth, a red-eyed rabbit hiding in his hat, four teapots, and 12 hearts beating. So mm. can you find those things? If you can't, then there's the key. She, <laughs> she supplied a key to unlock all the things <clears throat> hiding in the scene. Excellent. Yeah, very cool. Um, Lucky Dragon is asking if we ever read their comments about the chess realm being mirrored. Um, um I'm wondering I think so. if this is. Printed. But before we get into comments, I did want to bring up one thing because that's it. I think we got through art review. We played the game. We've given away prizes. You've got some comments we can read there in a second. But someone in the chat did ask about Oz. And mm. that does bring me to a point I wanted to make. So I've mentioned now several times recently that we've brought on board a person to help with business development. Now that had been one of the tasks that I had been handling personally, which we are now gonna hand over to someone else to take care of. His job will be um, the interfacing that's going on, say for instance, with EA, but also with potential financiers and publishers. Now he's told us that right now is, is a really good time to go out and secure financing for the development of new games. There's a lot of investors out there who feel like the start of the console cycle is a great time to put money into new games because by the time they're done in two years time, you'll be like right at the midpoint of saturation, you know, high saturation of the new console t um, cycle, uh, the new consoles. And that's a great time to release new games, right? So um, this means that with him taking the business development stuff off my plate, I then have a bit more time to focus my creative energy on more than just Asylum. So 
while we're going to continue working on asylum and that means working towards getting the design bible done which helps further our efforts at trying to get someone to fund asylum um, i also want to spend a few cycles on something else now why um, why do i want to spend time on something else well one of the things is i don't as, as you're aware i don't own and i don't control alice the alice franchise and it actually becomes it's very frustrating for me sometimes I've been interfacing with EA now for two years trying to get a license in place and I can't say much about the process other than look after two years anybody starts to feel frustrated in a process like this I'm no exception to that and as a result I really do want to be able to to be focusing some of my energy on something that I control that we um, control now I don't necessarily mean that it has to be a zombie but I do want to open this question up to you our audience our patrons and I'll, I'll write a post up about this um, if we devote some cycles to building a couple of smaller presentations around new ideas what should those ideas be we could make presentation material related to a retelling of Oz we could do presentation material related to the retelling of other or a collection of, of fairy tales. We can do a presentation related to the telling of a completely new story. Um, but the point is that I don't want to continue to have all of my eggs in just one basket. I'd like for there to be a little bit of time spent on, you know, new concepts. And the, and the same thing goes with like the stuff we're doing on the plush toys. Those, those plush toys are things that we control, um, that we own. And that I don't have to go ask someone else for permission in order to work on. So that's the the general thing. So I do want to get feedback from everybody. Like, what would you like to see us work on? You know, as a pitch, it's like a couple pages document that Mark, the the business development guy, can put alongside what we're pitching for Asylum um, to the people who are out there funding stuff like this. So something to think about. Oz is always a popular comment from people. You know, why don't you do Wizard of Oz, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, Lucky Dragon here and your favorite person, they make uh, the points, which we knew. We knew this back then, that the name didn't do the pitch any favors. Yeah, the name really screwed it up. That was my fault. I, I <clears throat> knew that the name was going to be difficult, but I, I'm one of those people who thinks that um, doing things a little bit wrong creates friction which online means interaction which means visibility so like one of the things i did this morning was i posted up on my facebook page that it's the birthday of van gogh and i showed that we have this um, van gogh sunflower thing uh in the mysterious shop but it's actually not the birthday of van gogh <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the anniversary of his death but the funny thing is that if I had just posted up that it's the birthday of Van Gogh, no one would have said anything. But because I posted up that it's the anniversary of his death, people came along and said, um, it's not his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the anniversary of his death, to which I said, being wrong about something on the internet creates more interactions, equals more visibility, so keep the corrections coming. That was actually the thought that was in my mind around Oz Zombie. I knew people were sick of zombies at that point, but I kind of thought that going a little bit against the grain was going to create more visibility for Oz Zombie, and it did create visibility, but it wasn't the only thing we did wrong there. We, we actually did quite a few things wrong with Oz Zombie, so, yeah. yeah. I just noticed the hype train is almost coming. Uh -huh. It's here! Yay! I think, whatever that means, and there's some uh, subs. And gifted subs have been rolling in. Thank you. Let's give big thanks to everyone who subbed. Yeah. Didn't see all the names coming in, but uh, super thanks to all you guys and gals. Yeah. And yeah, apparently a hype train has begun. Yay. <laughs> Whatever that means we to all you no young whippersnappers. Means. All right. And your online stuff. <laughs> I think we were already on a hype train. It's just we hit a level four hype train. Or we're on our way to a level four it... hype train. So it's not like it starts fresh every time the hype dies. We're like, it says now we're at a level four. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so see next Tuesday <laughs> says, if you continued Odd Zombie, would you still name it that or change it? Well, look, I think if we were going to, th this is a bigger question. If we 
go back to do another variation on the Wizard of Oz, uh, would we start where we left off with Oz Zombie, or we, we, would we just start from scratch? I I would prefer to just start from scratch with the team we have now, um, because we have another you know different team of artists, right? And and I think it's a new era, and we need to be um, cognizant of other games that have come out since this pitch was built. Um, and also, I was never a huge fan of this sort of super steampunk Dorothy. Um, I'm not that big a fan of, of the of the overly done steampunk. Yeah, there's something just weird about this image. It's just that big old hat and the big goggles on it. It's like you're trying too hard. Yeah, this It's like you live in Seattle in the 90s or well, something. If we had done this <laughs> as a character design, I don't think she would have aged very well. So mm -hmm. there's something about simplicity that, that leads to things being classic. And I don't think that this is simple enough. I think she's overdone. And I was never a really big fan of this Dorothy, but I, I don't think at the time I wasn't the one, you know, art directing this. I mean, if I if I had my say on something like this, I wouldn't have made her this complicated. I wouldn't have um, just she's, she's just a bit overdone. So anyway, um, I, I don't know. I, I think that the concept like this concept of the fact that the scarecrow in the original books was on a mission to get brains. And then we all know that zombies like to eat brains. I thought it was kind of a funny twist that the scarecrow in this in this twist on it was was sort of you know after brains in a zombie like fashion of course his idea about wanting brains was more about manipulation and control um anyway um, there there were some cute ideas in here i i think it's fine to start over though i i'd like to start over but this is a question for everybody you know this is a question for you you know yeah i mean there's a lot more to Oz than people realize that was in uh, the movie, was there not? I mean, I'm no expert, but I remember you telling me that there was massive amounts of Oz to be explored and all like different races and nonsense going off. Well, it's also um, important to remind people that this would if we do do an Oz, this will be my third attempt because okay. back way back in the day when I first started working with Ken Wong, we did something called American McGee's Oz. This was a toy from that project. It was a straw golem. Um, this was artwork that Ken Wong did of a Jack pumpkin head. And so, you know, we we did a lot of work on an Oz a long time ago. And that was funded and we were building it for a year. I mean, this is a screenshot from the Xbox version of the game. Wow. Uh, if you go on YouTube, you can actually find a trailer with gameplay footage of the original Oz game that we were doing. That was going to be the next game that I built after Alice. And we got a year into development on it. And then it was the, 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 someone pulled the plug because uh, it was uh, Infogram Ataris went bankrupt. And so, um, but you know, we, we did have dreams to make an Oz game years and years ago, and then it died. It was very sad. The flying monkey? That's a flying monkey toy. These toys turned out really nice. The packaging was kind of subpar, but the toys themselves were quite good. Hmm. Um, and the, I think the toys sold quite well, and they're, they're worth a lot of money now. Right. Um, so yeah, this, these did really well. Um, anyway, look, you know, I feel like Oz has always been a little bit cursed for me, and I'm I, there's a little bit of trepidation for me going back into that universe. But if that's what people want, but that's the question: what do people want? Can we ask that question? And um, you know, does our audience have feelings about idea? You know, different ideas that we might go to work on, and let's if so, let's hear them. Yeah, Shout I know you've out. got some comments over there, so. Let's have a look, shall we? Um, not a lot of comments at all, really. This stream it's very quiet. Yeah. It has. Yeah. Uh, so these were from uh, the latest Patreon post. Joey's tilted HD uh, post. Um, Therese says, "Love it, the carnage." Dave Cook also absolutely loves it. 
uh, Wendy J was commenting on the Alice mod. Uh, it's finally here. So excited to see. Yeah, we were also... waiting. We were waiting on that for a very long time. Uh, yeah. I know that we had known that it was in production for a year, and so there was there was quite a lot of hype building up around that mod. And it's you know it's for sure showing the work that went in over that year. Um, Ru Rugner's custom creations wants that as a print, the tilted Alice. I'm sure that'll end up being a print at some point. Uh, Panita. Mitapakadi. <laughs> You're terrible Panita at naming names. Panita Mitpakdi. Sorry. Also would like that as a print. Uh, Anna Leper, the house looks so much creepier and better now. Indeed it did. Um, Justin Cole now has to replay the original Alice. There's no excuse not to now. Because the texture pack's here. And Lucky Dragon. Uh, oh, we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Maybe you could give these textures to EA if when the official re-release of the game would certainly save them money. Yeah, so uh, that is something I'm going to try to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hand over Madness Returns and Alice, the original game, with the HD pack, texture pack to EA. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Jennifer... It says it's hoot here too. Hoot. It was very hoot. It's hoot. It's super hoot here. It has um, been hoot. Dougie Fresh <laughs> says, any chance you would resume the production of Oz Zombie once you finish Alice Asylum? It looks interesting. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about, Dougie Fresh, is that um, we I want to put some effort into other ideas in a catalog. And that way, you know, depending on how things are going with Alice Asylum, we have a few other projects that we're showing off. Um, this is at the request of the guy we're bringing on board to do business development again because he says there's money out there waiting for games and he's actually advised me that we're in a better position to negotiate against whoever I, I can't I hate not being able, <laughs> I, I, I hate not being able to talk um, anyway he says it puts us in a better position to negotiate if we have other things on the table at the same time and I understand what he means and I agree with that so yeah, yeah. All right, Sala um, saw the HD version on YouTube of Alice, says it's awesome. And Tiki Scatter uh, says it's just sweet that it's here because it was long overdue. Totally worth a second playthrough. Okay. Uh, see you next Tuesday, says American McGee, stupid question. Wouldn't you need to jump through hoops with the rights to Oz compared to Alice Wright? Question mark. No. Um, both Alice and Wizard of Oz are in the public domain, and that means that we can utilize them. In fact, Oz, for me, is less encumbered than Alice because I've not made an Oz game and been locked into any one partner with that, um, whereas with Alice, I'm locked in with EA. So, um, no, Oz, I can go and make variations on Oz until the cows come home. So it's only Alice that I've got these restrictions on me about. Yeah. Um, 16-Bit Shinobi really appreciates the changes and additions. I think he's talking about Joey's image. And also likes the Joey decoder image. Uh, Andoni can't find their copy of American McGee's Alice. Still down downloading the mod, though. Uh, thanks for the hard work, guys. Yeah, well, I couldn't find a copy of my Alice game either, and... <laughs> Um, I still managed to get it running somehow. I wonder how I did that. I wonder where I got my copy. <laughs> Might have been the internet helped me out with that a little bit. Um, American McGee's Dracula. So Dracula <laughs> is problematic. Uh, the Bram Stoker estate, I think, I can't remember. There's something, there is something problematic about Dracula. I can't remember exactly what it is, but um, I think you have to be careful around that name because i believe it's still under some sort of protection or copyright or something like that right. um art underscore zero says oz and jibs are the immediate things that come to mind but i'd like to see other ideas from the insane children and desert phoenix says maybe start with a concept art book for oz zombie and see how well it does 
But yeah, Desert Phoenix, um, that's one of the things I'm thinking is that when we have a few spare cycles here and there, uh, we'll get like one or two pieces of art done along with me doing some writing around some smaller concepts. And then we'll have two or three of these and then we can kind of vote and we can kind of feel our way around until we've decided that, oh, you know, like, hey, yeah, this new interpretation of Oz or this new interpretation of Hansel and Gretel or this completely new thing. Um, I've had a bunch of people recently saying to me, why don't you just do like your own version of Sucker Punch? Meaning it's a girl, she's in an asylum, and she's got an alternate reality in which she lives, but she's not necessarily called Alice and that's not called Wonderland. Because honestly, no one could stop me from doing that. And Sucker Punch wasn't limited in their storytelling by the fact that they look very much like my Alice and they look very much like an Alice in Wonderland in general. So I have been thinking about that. Um, I've had a thought that is kind of difficult uh, because I don't know how my family would feel about this, but I think many of you know that my sister, her name is Mercy, um, or was, <clears throat> her name was Mercy, um, she disappeared um, some years ago. And, and I keep coming back to this idea of trying to tell her story. Um, and do it in the form of a game with a female protagonist who's struggling with mental issues and with drugs and with a lot of the things that would cross over into the real world story um, that was hers and then obviously giving it a sucker punch like twist of the alternate reality in which a lot of this stuff is interpreted um, and to me that's a story that would be as close to my you know core as alice is because alice is was is my attempt at repackaging a lot of the crap that i dealt with as a child having to do with sexual abuse and psychological abuse and filtering that all down into a game and then um you know just thinking about the thing that's happened with my sister there's certain points and aspects of that that i've never really come to terms with I've never really dealt with and so as a writer and as an artist a lot of times when I sit down to start thinking about where do I want to have an outlet that keeps popping up in my mind because there's aspects of that that I feel incredibly sad about or I feel incredibly angry about um, that I feel incredibly frustrated about and I feel like there's something there with Mercy's story and her struggle um, and the mystery of all of that that could be um, utilized but you know some people might look at that and say well that's just exploitation of pain and suffering of a family member and of the family members you know who are to this day suffering because of her disappearance <laughs> but um that's something that i'm thinking about you know maybe there's an original creation in the kind of sucker punch fantasy realm but it's it's um, centered on a character that would be inspired by my sister so that's something that I've been thinking about as well. Um, it's tough, you know, it's tough to know where we should go off and in what direction, but that's some of the stuff that I'm, I'm thinking about. All right. Had a lot of stuff rattling around up there. Yeah. Sucker Punch was weird. It was. Weird in the way that I didn't like it that much. But after watching the trailer, it looked like a movie that was made for me. Hmm. Like just a bunch of saucy ladies getting up to like fantastical adventures in over-the-top action yeah, what's not to like i only saw it one and time. it just turned out to be a bit Ugh. yeah go figure yeah well I, I only saw it the one time and i remember feeling that it was quite plasticky um it didn't it just didn't connect with me the characters didn't connect with me the story didn't connect with me but i maybe i should go back and watch it again i maybe i i seem to recall that it was so over the top in so many places that it didn't balance out the emotional connection to the main character in a way that that carried me through all of the over the topness but um yeah, it's just me mm. yeah all right a few more comments here uh jana north just praising joey's images some more saying they're awesome hmm. um, by the way I, I there's a bunch oh. of supportive comments um in, in you know a bunch of supportive words in the comments here and i appreciate that from everybody it it's just something i've been thinking about for a long time and it's not easy for me to get it out when i get it out it makes me want to cry um, which is maybe a sign that i should be trying to get it out you know maybe i should be trying to convert that into something 
um, from art, but I, I do appreciate everybody being supportive and kind in the comments there. Um, yeah. I, I think everyone here recognizes when I'm talking about something that's really um, deep and you know connected to who I am and what matters to me. Uh, that stuff is original and it's interesting and maybe that's the thing that should be pursued. I don't know. Um, we'll we'll see. Yeah, but like you say, tons of support from people if you do. Hmm. So it's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. All right, Oof. what other comments well, This is we moving got here? on to the depression and progress mm. post. Um, this is the one that actually had the bare-fisted bear in it. Um, right, I'm trying to find that. I'm all verklimpt now, by the way. Do you know what that means? Klimped. Verklimpt. Verklimpt. Yeah, it's the Mike Myers on Saturday Night Live. He would talk about something serious, and then he would get verklimpt, and he would say, okay, okay, you guys just go off and talk about something uh, uh, on your own. I'll give you a subject, you know, messed up right. children's <laughs> toys or something like that. Um, but anyway, it was his funny way of saying um, when he got emotional or sad, all right. Um, I can't seem to find our Patreon page. Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah. What one? What's this one called? This one. Oh, depression. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was going on in this post? Uh, well, this was artwork from the chess realm, plus some photos of us going down to Yin's hometown. This mm -hmm. guy. I want to tell you something really crazy about American politics. This guy is uh, seventy-eight years old. Um, right. He's the same age as Joe Biden, who's running to be the president of the United States right now. Right. <laughs> I just, I feel like electing a guy who's the same age as somebody who's this age. Um, <laughs> by the way, he has no teeth left. He's got one tooth. And it's quite funny watching him eat noodles because he has to just take them all down in one slurp. <laughs> right. there's, there's, no, there's no biting the noodle in half. Um, but I, I think I said on on Twitter or Facebook or something about the fact that the two of them, Lucky and and Grandpa, I think Lucky actually has more teeth than. than <laughs> this is great, great Grandpa, by the way. Oh no, great Grandpa. He's he's one Grandpa great removed. <laughs> anyway, that was this post. Yeah. And what about it? Well, what we got here. So yes, Redmer Stamhuis says that holy shit barefisted bear is looking hella sick he's super cool i like him he a is. lot yeah. uh, shelby finley just questions pig in wolves clothing yeah, yeah. why not that's, that's cool that's what that was it was a pig in wolves clothing um andoni about pig and wolf said they saw it as a kangaroo first there's also the this wolf. wolf <laughs> there's also this wolf in grandma clothing, which I, thought I like was, that as well. I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, I don't believe that we would be the first to have done that, though. I feel like I saw that that was done somewhere else once Probably, before. Probably, I reckon. And Lucky Dragon here again, saying about the art prints now. Glad that people can pick up the Royal Blue Knight. It's the most badass Alice I have ever looked. Uh, yeah. Got it on canvas, went back to other lands. Reminds them of the Vorpal Blade advertisement poster that their brother ruined. Oh. <laughs> then asks us if we have any more of those lying around. Which... Yeah, I think I replied to that comment online. You did. Yeah. I don't think we do. All right. So. Well, uh, that does bring us to the end of our two hours. So we're going to give away Ooh. one more prize. Uh, I guess that the question in, for this one, I've done all the questions this, yeah. this live stream, and I, I, I want to any... say I think my questions have been excellent, if I do say so myself. It'd be um, okay if a so, little boring. I get bent. So <laughs> my question for the final uh, giveaway today, we're going to give away one of these lovely wolf, red in wolf. This, this seems to be a constant theme <laughs> in my art, is <laughs> characters uh, inside other characters. What's wrong with us? Just... <laughs> Anyway, um, so the question to win this prize, well, actually just to get in the running to win that prize, is of all of the things that we have talked about today in terms of Oz or, or potentially other fairy tales, um, I, I saw some people mentioning um, other ideas in the comments there. Uh, what have we heard so far that if I was to start presenting a little bit of new art and writing, what would you like to see? Do you want to see Oz? revived um is it something around the story of my sister revived is there fa other fairy tales that you like 
um, that you'd like to see revived, like Red Riding Hood or um, things like that, don't say Peter Pan, because that one <laughs> is definitely um, off limits. We're not allowed to touch Peter Pan. Um, a couple so, yeah. of people said that earlier. That's, that's, no. Is there a story as to why that's offline? Yeah, it's owned by the estate of the author, um, so you're not allowed to touch Peter Pan without licensing it. Uh, so anyway, yeah, let us know in the comments, um, you know, what, which ones should we explore a little bit? Um, I think what we'll end up doing is I'll get Joey or somebody to do some artwork um, around these concepts, and then we'll present some of that stuff over on Patreon. And I want to be clear, while that's happening, we are still working towards the design bible for Alice Asylum. Myself and Alex right now are working on the story section for depression slash chess realm, and we're doing that with Omri. There were some pieces of art, actually, because we screwed up the art folder thing. Um, I had uploaded, like, something that Omri did uh, yeah, it was this thing. So we never got a chance to discuss this, but basically Omri had done this based off of his reading of Alice's adventure into the chess realm in the books, and because there were certain moves she had to make in order to get closer and closer to the realm, uh, and he was asking whether or not we might emulate or copy some of that stuff as the structure for how she would approach this realm in Asylum. So that's stuff that we're gonna be working on for Asylum. Um, and then we'll have some of that to show the next time we do a live stream. Speaking of Omri's stuff, did you see his recent newest Alice meme picture? The this is fine. Yeah, I saw that. That was pretty he put funny. That up on Instagram. Yeah, I like that. That was good. <laughs> All right, so I think that- uh... Most people saying Oz. Yep. Uh, Quite a few saying the uh, sister thing. Um, yeah, Oz seems to be winning. Oh, a boy. couple of people said Red Riding Hood, but kind of already did that. We, I have done Red Riding Hood quite a few times. Uh, I'm happy to do Red. I mean, that the poster we're looking at here is Red Riding Hood. I, I think Red Riding Hood is a fun one, uh, but um, Oz certainly has a lot more depth to it. And the thing around my sister could be interesting. We'll see. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and roll it. Roll. Silver Jinxed. Mm, okay. Why do I feel like Silver Jinxed won let's recently? Have a anyway, congratulations, Silver Jinxed. You're allowed to win more than once. Uh, yes. You know how to do the thing. Send an email to support at mysterious.design, and we will uh, want to see your name, your address, your phone number. Format that in a human, readable, normal way that doesn't cause anger or frustration. And then we will be sending you one of these here art prints. I think we're gonna, we're gonna, oh, that's important. So we're gonna test something on you guys. There are these magnetic frame things uh, that we wanna ship along with the art prints. And the idea is you'll get the art print rolled up in the tube, but you'll also get these magnet bits. Um, and they, they obviously <coughs> clip together, but you clip them together around your art print. Nail this on camera. There we go. Oh, it's terrible. I did a terrible, terrible job. Anyway, you clip them together on the art print, um, and it basically forms like a instant frame. Um, the thing though is we don't yet offer these. We don't sell these yet. I want to see about what happens when we try to ship them because i don't want the art print to get damaged in the shipping process yeah yeah they would have to be rolled up in something wouldn't and, they and i think the shipping tubes have to be bigger so okay. well that's what we're going to find out so um the four of you who won these things today we're going to get emails from you but i think once you get your prizes email us and tell us <laughs> like were the prints messed up and did the frames work and all that kind of crap so please do you are guinea pigs there you go yeah guinea pigs all right that's it so yeah anything anything before we go no oh. silver jinx says gotcha she she seems to be on board with with the magnetic frame testing, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it'd be cool if when you order something from us, you get an art print, it's rolled up, and it comes with the frame. Because then you could just take it out, and it's it's actually got like a little frame hangy string on the top there. That was you know? the top thing done. It's made out of like a little leather oh, string. One of them has the string through it. Yeah. Right. 
But it's, I think it's kind of nifty, you know? Yeah. Like, it makes it where it's instant art. You get it, and then you just hang it on the wall. Boom. Done. 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 Get bent, <laughs> governor. All right. That's it are for we, today. Are we going to be going, or are we going to big up, like, the four things? Oh, you can do that. Okay. I don't you know. know. We also need to do, like, the lucky five thing for Patreon while we're here. Yeah? Yeah. Then you do that while I, I try to find my webpage. There's the four things. If you would like to help support the stuff we do, you're already helping. Being here is cool. The subs, the bits, Somebody the hype a trains, fart. the farts. Somebody played a fart. I heard it in the thing in my headphones oh, over here. I thought it was I actually didn't. you farting. No, okay. sorry. But yes, we have four other things if uh, you would like to help out. Thing number one. You want no, me to do that? Please do that. Is sign up to the Alice 3 mailing list, <laughs> if you would, please. Blob Bob Knob Bob is already <laughs> signing up, but you could sign up too. Don't sign up with a fake email address. It doesn't help. Follow our social media from all of these icons here, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. As you already probably know, we also have a patron, Patreon. Um... Yeah, there are many different tiers, many different levels that you could join at. So head on over, see if there's anything there you like the look of. And there's the mysterious store, which is full of goodies and is getting much more full of things to do with skulls these days. We do have a lot of there's skulls. There's a skull, a dedicated <laughs> skull section now. It's very funny, because uh, we sell so many of these stupid skulls, I don't understand it. I have to like ship out ten of these skulls a week. That and the dumb <laughs> rabbit ears. Now I'm curious <laughs> to know if we add more skulls, will people might buy more skull crap? Yeah, plant pot, like fruit chunk stabber. <laughs> Lights. I, what I don't. Spoony for. What I don't get. I don't even know how they find these things. You know, you should put those rabbit ears under poopy gifts. I was going to. Because that really is. I don't even know where the rabbit ears are. They. How do people even find them? Where are the other? Oh, they are. are these. For some reason, we sell like ten of these a week, <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. And is it? Is it this video that makes them sell? I don't know. Where's the volume? This might very well be RIP headphone users. Yeah, sorry. I remember it being quite loud. All right, I won't do it. But anyway, <laughs> um, these rabbit ears sell, and I don't know why. Uh. And it just freaks me out that we sell so many of them. Um, but we do, <laughs> and then we sell a bunch of these skulls, and none of it makes any sense to me. But anyway, if you want to support that... So this stuff, this stuff, Mysterious, is what supports me and my wife and my kid... Um, so when you buy skulls from us, that is what supports, and it supports Martin, um, too. So, yeah, go buy skulls. Yep. That's how you support us. And I guess the last thing then is over on Patreon. Each month we do something called the Lucky Five, where we just get a random number generator, pick five people, and they win something. Haven't decided what that is yet, but in order to keep things legal and above board, it can't only be for Patreons patrons so we're opening up here as well so when this is uploaded to youtube uh, if you comment below that youtube video with uh i don't know what what kind of quirky stuff have we said today i don't know uh hashtag pandapede pandapede that yeah. sounds like a good <laughs> yeah we did say pandapede and then anyone who does that in the comments below the youtube video will also be in the draw for whatever we decide to give away can you go over the day winners in case people went on a bathroom break at the time? What? What? That person wants to know who won things today? Well, it wasn't you. No. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> you. <laughs> Cirilla Rose, Cyber, Dante, Truth Decay, Silver Jinxed. There you go. All right. It wasn't you. <laughs> don't, right, don't do Pandapede here. Do it in the YouTube video once it's uploaded to YouTube. Please. I don't know if you explained that very well. I, anyway, I said it really clearly. All right. Uh, thank you, <laughs> everyone, for joining us today. You are all loved very much. We hope that wherever you are in the world, that the pandemic or whatever other disaster is not causing you too much grief. And um, there's some Lulu rolling around on the floor <laughs> at the outro. Yeah. Good timing. All righty. Good timing, dog. Uh, we will be back again for more live streaming <laughs> in two weeks. And... Um, I think it's about it. So see you later. Get bent. Goodbye. <laughs>